The next function we're going to look at using the quadric algorithm with hyperbolic functions in the vectoring mode is the natural logarithm. So we'll quickly have a recap of what the natural log function is and why we use it in mathematics. So don't worry too much about this for the moment. We're going to have a look at it in the graphical calculator and it'll all become quite clear. So we start off with this function here and this function is called the exponential function and it's written as e raised to the power of x. Now the value of e is the number 2.718 and this is an approximation that actually goes on forever. Now this function here e to the power of x is a very important function in mathematics. It's the only function that when we differentiate it, that is we find the rate of change of this function, it gives us the exact same function e to the x. Now the logarithmic function, that's the one we're going to approximate in this video using the quadric algorithm, is the inverse of this exponential function. So this is the natural log function here and it is written as ln x. So let's go into the graphical calculator and we'll have a look at this in a bit more detail. So we have the exponential function drawn here in blue. So this is our e to the x. I've also drawn in the tangent to each point on this line. So this tangent here will give you the gradient at the point. So in this instance here, we're sitting at this point here. We come along 0.4 in the x direction and the y direct height is 1.492. And you can see here the gradient at this point is equal to 1.492. It's actually 1.4918, so it's a bit of an approximation, but it's approximately equal to 1.492. So if we were to find any other point on this function e to the x, you'll note that the gradient of the point is equal to the height of the point. So for example, the height of this point in the function is height 1 and the gradient is 1. And if we move it along to any other point, you'll see that the height of this function is 3.32, so the height of the function is equal to the gradient at that point. So it means that whenever we differentiate this function, this is the unique function in mathematics, whereby if we were to differentiate it, we just get back to the very same function. So why is this function important in mathematics? Well, if we were to think about the number one, if we were to multiply one by one, we get the number one. And this is the only number in the real number line which has this unique property. And we can call this a unitary operator. So unitary means one, and the operation is multiplication. Now the same thing can be said here for this exponential function. It's a unitary operator, but it's a unitary operator for the operation of differentiation. So if we were to differentiate e to the x, we get e to the x. And if we differentiate it again, we'll get e to the x, and so on and so forth. In the same way, if we multiply 1 by 1 by 1 by 1, we just get the value of 1. So this is a an important function within mathematics. And we will be approximating this function using the quadric algorithm in a, a later video. But really what we're interested in here is the inverse of this function. And the inverse of the function is this function here, which is our ln x. Now what we can do is we can pick a point, and we're going to pick the point here. And this point is point 0.2. So point 2 should give us the value of 0.693 whenever we work through our quadratic algorithm 
which is going to approximate the LNX. So how are we going to generate the natural log function using the Cordic algorithm? Well, we're going to use an identity. And this identity relates the natural log function with the inverse hyperbolic tan function. And this function is ln a upon b is equal to 2 arc tanch a minus b upon a plus b. Now, I'm not going to go through a proof of this identity. I'm just asking you to accept this. If you like, you could put both of these identities into the graphical calculator and you could see that one is indeed equal to the other. Now we've seen in a previous video that when we use the hyperbolic and vectoring mode, we can generate this arctange function. And we generate it via the angle Zn, such that Zn is equal to Z0 plus arctange Y0 upon X0. So now what we want to do is we want to equate the values for our Y0 and X0 with the equation we have above. So we can see here that y0 is equal to the a minus b and the x0 is a plus b. Now if we were to set the value of b is equal to 1, then we would have a minus 1 and a plus 1. And if we set the value for z0 is equal to 0, then we would have only this part of the value Zn. So therefore we could write this function here above as a half ln a. So what I've done is I've taken the 2 down. The value of b has become a value of 1. So we're simply left with the ln a. And we've got the arctange and the value here will be a minus the value b which is now 1. So it's a minus 1 upon a plus 1. So it means that what we can do is we can set the value of x0, which is on the bottom line here, and it's on the bottom line here, as the value a plus 1. And we can set the value for y0, which is on the top line here, and that's the top line here, as the value a minus 1. And we can set the value z0 as equal to 0. Now when we use these values as the initialization, then we're going to have this function here, a half ln a. Now granted we don't have exactly ln a, but we can then run through another quadratic algorithm in order to multiply by 2, and this will give us the final value, which will be our ln a. So let's go ahead and we'll see how we're going to do this. Now we're going to work through a two-step process. We're going to start off with the identity a half ln a is equal to arctanch a minus 1 upon a plus 1. Now the first step is going to be the hyperbolic vectoring mode and it's going to give us a value of zn is equal to z0 plus arctanch y0 upon x0. And we've seen from the previous page we can say x0 is equal to a plus 1 y0 is equal to a minus 1, and z0 is equal to 0. And it will give us the output a half ln a. Now if we were to choose a value for a is equal to 2, so we're trying to find the natural log of 2, then we can see our x0 is going to be 2 plus 1, which is 3, y0 is 2 minus 1, which is a value of 1. It's going to give us the output a half ln 2, which is 0.3465. Now we're going to go on to step two. In the step two, we're going to use linear vectoring mode. Now we're going to have to multiply the output of the first stage by a value of two in order to get the final value of the log, natural log of two. Now in the linear vectoring mode, we have our output Zn is equal to Z0 plus Y0 upon X0. We can set the value Z0 is equal to 0. 
we can set the value of y0, which is the output of stage 1, to 0.3465. Now, in order to multiply this thing by 2, that's equivalent to dividing by a value of a half. So we can take this value here and we can divide it by a half. So x0 is 0.5. That's going to give us the final answer, which is the natural log of 2, which is, e is equal to 0.693. So let's go ahead and we'll work through these two stages using the graphical calculator. We have our hyperbola here. We have our quartic algorithm, our initialization, and our output. Now we're going to start off with the value x0 is equal to a plus 1. Now a is a value of 2, so x0 is going to be the value of 3. And the y0 is going to be 2 minus 1, which is a value of 1. So we're going to start off with this vector here at 3, 1. Now we're going to be using our hyperbolic vectoring mode. So we're going to be looking at the height here, yi, and we're going to be adding on and subtracting off angles in order to make this height tend towards zero. So let me go ahead and I'll start doing that now. So you can see our y value here has tended towards zero. Now with each of these iterations, we're going to have to adjust the value for our z. So that is, we're going to have our vector for z is going to start off at a value of zero. So our vector for z lies along this axis here at an angle of zero. And we're going to be adding on and subtracting off the requisite angles for the hyperbolic mode. Now, I've already worked through this once before, and the angles that we're going to be adding on and subtracting off are given here. So it's 31.473 minus this and plus this one here and so on and so forth. And it's going to give us a final angle of 19.778. So let me go ahead and I'll put that in just now. So we will have our angle 19.7778 degrees. We multiply it by pi divided by 180 in order to get the value in radians, which is equal to 0.345. Now 0.345 is approximately equal to the actual value from our calculation above, which is 0.346. So this is the first stage of our algorithm. Now we have to go on to do the second stage. So let's do that now. We will now start step two. In step two, we're going to have the output Zn is equal to Z0 plus Y0 upon X0. Now the value for our Z0 is equal to zero. The value for our X0 is equal to 0.5. Now the value for our Y0 is actually going to be the output from the previous stage which is going to be 0.345. So let's put those values in. So again, we're going to be using the vectoring mode. So the value for our yi is going to tend towards zero. So I will go ahead and I'll, I will subtract off and add on the angles in order to ensure that the value yi tends to zero. So you can see that the value of our yn has tended towards the value 0. Now with each of these iterations, we're going to have 
to generate the value for our Zn. Now I've already worked through this example and the value for our Zn is going to be given by these angles here and I've added and subtracted off the requisite values. Now the final angle you're going to get is an angle of 40.062 degrees. So let me go ahead and I'll add on and subtract these off within the calculator. So this gives the vector here, Zn, which has got a final angle of 40.062 degrees. So let's convert this into radians. So we take our angle 40.062 and we multiply by pi and divide by 180. And that gives us the value 0 0.699 in radians. Now this is approximately equal to the actual value for the natural logarithm of 2, which is 0 0.693. So let's plot those two points. The actual value for the natural logarithm of 2 is 0 0.693, and our simulated value using the quartic algorithm is 0 0.699. So this process does work and it gives us a good approximation to the natural logarithm. So that's all for this video. Thank you for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.